I recently returned from Russia, and uh, though every time I go there, I'm flooded with thousands of images of amazing artwork. On this trip, the artwork of the Russian avant-garde painters left me with the strongest impressions. In particular, I learned about the strength and courage of Kazmir Malevich. I knew he was best known for supremism, but I really had no idea how he developed this form of art or anything about the artist. Malevich was very interested in Eastern philosophy and used it as a base from which to work. He felt he was much like God because he too could create things that had never existed before. He said, What I create is not subject or subordinate to any of the laws of nature. In fact, you can take his paintings like Supremus number 58 and turn it in any direction. No matter what direction you turn it in, it absolutely makes no difference to your understanding or appreciation of the work. The painting does not follow any physical law. It has no up or down. It is not ruled by gravity. Malevich felt it was exactly the same as the laws of physics in outer space or that of the universe. We all know that Wasley Kandinsky is considered the father of abstraction with his painting improvisation done in 1910. I learned on my trip that this painting is called The War in Russia, and in it Kandinsky still holds to some forms of representation. There are shapes that represent objects such as a dog, soldiers, lightning, and so on. In 1915, Malevich created a painting the world knows as Red Square, but that he titled A Peasant Woman in Two Dimensions. To Malevich, this painting was all about letting go of all manifestation. But to the art world, he had created total abstraction in the development of constructivism. This painting was heavily criticized by his contemporaries at the time he painted it. In response, he said, I am glad you do not like it. I can go farther and farther into the unknown wilderness of life. It is there where real transformation can take place. Like Kandinsky, Malevich was exploring themes of spirituality, or as he would say, cosmic space, the idea of the weightlessness of pure form. With the painting Red Square, Malevich was creating not just a painting, but a symbol. Here we see that the color red is the most active and the color white the most passive. He believed that these two colors represented all the colors in the spectrum, and by using only these two colors, he had re represented all color. In 1912, Malevich painted his first black square. Altogether, he painted four black square paintings. He said he had created a code with this painting that represented all forms of art because the square was a basic shape used by all artists, all types of artists. Again, the use of co the color white represented all color in the spectrum. From there, Malevich believed the artist could create all other colors. To him, the use of the color white in his paintings became a symbol. Here we have an Indian diagram that explains Malevich's theories on the development of his first black square as he described in his 1915 manifesto from cubism to supremism. You see the black square in the center. This is the concentration of spiritual energy. The small squares around it represent all other civilizations on earth. This is also called a kind of motion. The, in the Russian Museum in St. Petersburg, where one of Malevich's black square paintings hangs today, you will notice that the black square is placed in the center between black cross and black circle. You will notice in black circle that the sphere is raised up in the air with this, with, and beside it, the painting black square, the square is firmly in the center. With these two paintings, it was his intention to represent a spiritual staircase from earth to the moon, with black square meant representing the center or the earth and black circle representing the moon. With the painting black cross, Malevich felt that the cross was an old symbol of choice, meaning a crossroads in ancient times that would be the most dangerous place one could stand, and often a place with his painting Girls in a Field. 
In this painting, you see three girls, and behind them is a world with bright colors representing a world with no problems. However, this painting is actually a statement on the political oppression that had started in 1924 in Russia. Malevich is actually making a comment on a world that no longer exists. In his painting, Head of a Peasant, painted at the same time period, you will notice that the people are working, but you cannot see their mouths. Malevich was trying to say, don't speak, don't tell the truth. The sky is black to represent a world that has, could not exist anymore. In, his final, in one of his final paintings of this genre, the two male figures, painted in the early 1930s, you can see things are getting worse and worse. The figures have no individual identity. Instead, the edges of the form of being, instead of the edges of the form being hard, which was characteristic of Malevich's work, now the edges are rough. And what he's trying to say here is he's trying to represent the irregularities and unstableness around him. In 1927, Malevich had one of his first one-man shows in both Warsaw and then in Berlin. It was his very first recognition by the Western world and his first exposure of any kind of fame for his work. By this time, Lenin had died and Trotsky had fallen from power. The period of open idealism in Russia was quickly closing. Stalin was changing the focus of art that he allowed in Russia by declaring that paintings could only be shown if they had educational value. At this time, there was a large collection of impressionist, post-impressionist and Favis paintings in Russia. All of these paintings were taken off their stretcher bars, rolled, and then packed into trains and shipped off to Siberia because they contained no educational value. Malevich's work was declared by Stalin to be bourgeoisie art. His work was confiscated, and then he was banned from creating and exhibiting. Malevich responded by saying, Art can advance for and develop for art's sake alone. Art does not need us, and it never did. On September 20th, 1930, Malevich was arrested and taken to prison. When he was released six months later, he was given three choices. One, he could leave the country. Two, he could close... He could paint for himself in a completely isolated environment and not show his work to anyone, or three, he could become a realist painter. He attempted to become a realist portrait painter, um, and here we see some portraits that he did, including one of himself, a self-portrait, um, with him dressed in Renaissance costume. After this, he applied his talents to designing tableware, and then he decided to get into costume design where he did have a big influence. Malevich de developed cancer while he was in prison in 1930. He died of cancer in St. Petersburg on May 15, 1935 at the age of 57. On his deathbed, a black square was exhibited above him. In 2002, one of his black square paintings sold for $1 million to a Russian philanthropist Vladimir Putantin, who donated it to the State Hermitage Museum collection. It was the largest single private donation in Russia since, for, since Lenin's forced nationalization in 1918. In 2008, Malevich's supremest composition from 1916 set a world record for any Russian work of art and sold for just over $60 million dollars. Altogether, he created 85 supremist work. Of those, 22 were lost or destroyed. 47 are in public collections, and the rest are held privately. Malevich is responsible for influencing an entire era of artists who were to come.